channel. Uh, we're going to work on this refrigerator. It's a Domatic refrigerator today. Uh, if you watched my last video, we diagnosed this refrigerator um, has power going into the board, but we've got no functions out of the board. So I ordered a new board. LP appliances and campers. Um, if they're outside their warranty period, I really like the dinosaur stuff. Um, for water heaters, furnace, refrigerator, I really like the dinosaur boards. Um, you can't go wrong with dinosaur. They they really got quality boards uh, for RV appliances. So uh, we're going to put this in today, and uh, this is a. Uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to video, but I'll, I'll try my best. Uh, I have to apologize up front about the road. I'm a, I'm a mobile service, but this gentleman here just really wanted to, to leave this camper with me for a week and let me work on it. Um, and the building that I borrowed from a buddy of mine is right on the main highway. so. Sorry about this road noise, um, but we're going to get started. All right, I'll bring you along. Well, typically, um, this is a this is a board that I haven't had any experience with yet, because um, I've just never put a dinosaur board in, on a domatic replaced a domet. I've never replaced a domatic refrigerator board with a dinosaur board that has the uh, reigniter built in. Uh, I have a lot of experience with the Dinosaur P711. It replaces the dinosaur board, or I mean the, it replaces the Dometic board that does not have the built-in reigniter, uh, that it would have the white reigniter box right here. Um, so I, those, when you, when you change those boards, um, you can't go you know, write down and take wire off and put it on the same connector on the dinosaur. But since they built this board, they actually duplicated. They actually duplicated the uh, the exact same wire position as the OEM board. So this is actually just taking the wires off and putting them right back on the exact same the exact same position. So. Uh, this is going to, I thought I was going to get to show you how to do that, but uh, still it's pretty easy. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, so it's pretty easy for me to figure out what wires what anyway, so um, I'm not going to bother just taking them off one at a time and, and putting them back on because, like I say, I, I know what they are and I know where they're going and I know what they do, so... Uh, now, if you don't have experience with this, though, you know, you might want to uh, try to, uh, you know, take them off one at a time and put them on the new board. The bad thing is they're just short. Uh, you can label them before you pull them off um, or something like that. That actually has a screw in it. Well, that's weird. I haven't known Dometic to use a screw to hold their boards in and forever. That would explain why it was so hard to get out. There you have it. Put it in the right side first. And it should slip right down in there. Oh, let's see here. This this little wire right here is the light, the interior light in the refrigerator. So it goes on that first connector on the left side. The next one is the battery. I know that this is the power. This is the wire that comes from
power comes into the junction box, goes over to this thermal overload on the flue, and back to the board. That's the power wire. So it goes on the next terminal. And then the, the next terminal should be our AC our AC coming in. Yeah. So that's our AC power coming into the board. The next one is the neutral for the AC coming in. That's that wire. And I know what these wires are because I can see where they're coming from. And then the next one, the next two are the a for the AC heater. And there's here's the other one. And then the very last one is the ground. That little wire is only about three inches long, comes right from that ground post. Alright, now that we got all them hooked up, hook up our gas valve. Our thermistor and then our six pin connector with all the, the communications and stuff between this lower board and the eyebrow board. Alright, and our little igniter wire. Alright. I'm gonna go in and cut the refrigerator on and hopefully we got function now. Got the new board installed, went in, kept the refrigerator on. We got lights and stuff. Um, I put it on automatic. Uh, the camper is plugged into the, the short cord is plugged into AC power. And uh, since the refrigerator is operating on automatic, this heating element should heat up pretty quickly. And uh, if the AC heating element, I'm just putting my finger on it. Uh, I'm going to do that very carefully. If the, uh, we'll give a few minutes here and see if the AC heating element heats up if we don't feel any heat. And we'll check the element, make sure the element's okay. Um, he could have, there's a chance he could have burnt the element up and plugged the scamper in too funny, but I haven't seen that too many times. But it's possible. So if we don't heat up here in the next few minutes, then we'll. Take the wires back off and uh, and diagnose the uh, the heating element. Make sure it's good. While we're waiting to see if that uh, heating element heats up, I'm gonna test the gas function real quick. When you're out here working on a refrigerator, the quickest way to test the gas function is just to unplug the refrigerator. Uh, got the refrigerator on auto. You unplug it here, and it should switch over to gas. So, Go listen here. I know you won't be able to hear of all that road noise, but there's a delay. It's, it's clicking. It must be must be lit. You're looking. Yeah, I can hear. Looks nice and blue. That's what you want on a propane flame. Blue. I don't want to see no orange, yellow. I'm going to plug it back in because I don't want the flame to influence because we're trying to see if that heating element's going to heat up. So I'm going to plug it back in. That will automatically cut the gas off. Uh, let me very carefully reach up here and fill this heating element. Not sure the heating helm is working. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you how to diagnose that. I've got my meter out. I've got it set on the AC scale. And I'm going to. This heating element, the, the connectors actually have 
little plastic covers that have a, have a door right here on the back. So you can actually flip that door open on the back of those connectors. And that way, see those little doors? That way we can reach in here with our probes and see if we have, okay, we've got AC power coming out of the board to power the heating element. That heating element is still cold. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut the refrigerator off for just a minute. All right, now that I've got the refrigerator off and unplugged, I can safely reach in there and unplug those heating elements. We're gonna put our meter on ohm scale. Can you see that meter? Oh, you could like that. All right, got that heating element unhooked. My meter's on ohm scale. We're gonna back probe these. And the heating element is bad. No resistance, it should be right around 44 ohms or so. So it did get that, uh, it did get that heating element. I should have one of those heating elements on the truck. Um, let me go find it. I'll show you how to get this heating element out. These wires are always wound around, so just uh, get the wires loose. Like such. It's going to be really, really difficult to see. This cover right here. Um, there's a tab up here. You can feel it. And it helps that I know exactly where it's at. I'm going to get that little door out from under that tab. So it'll do that. Raise up on this. And pull it out. So it's got a slot right there. When it's in there, the little slot here is here. And this slot is up in the top. So when you raise it up, it allows this slot to come out and it slips right out. Now, sometimes these heating elements are really stuck. This one's not. It turns easily. You just go straight up with it. Um, that heating element sets sets in a pipe that is attached to the to the bowler tube right there. So we're just gonna wiggle and push straight up. <laughs> there we have our heating element. Probably have to get my glasses. There's wattages and stuff. We want to make sure we get the the same size heating helmet. So I'm gonna go get my glasses so I can read that and go get, hopefully I've got a heating helmet on the truck and get this thing done. I closed that garage door. That actually should help, help with that road noise a lot. You just kinda, there's a slit in that insulation. You reach up there and feel that Feel that pipe if this thing slides in. Feed it up through there. Find the pipe. Get it all lined up. like it come out should go should slip right down in there a little wiggle 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 down as far as it'll go there you go take the stick that up in there like I say that that slot right there just goes goes in a slides up on that piece of metal up on top. There it is. Slip it down. Put it over there. Get it hooked uh, 
Oops. Kicked you. Sorry. Get it hooked back on that little tab. Sometimes that can be a that can be a bit of a trick. Hear that? Yeah. We'll uh, take and wind these wires up a little bit around these other wires. It just helps keep them out of the way. We won't wind it around as many times as they had it. Let's put these back on the AC out connectors. that. Uh, plug the refrigerator back in. I'm going to go inside and cut it on. Refrigerator's on auto. Um, plugged in. Uh, the camper's plugged in. So that element should heat right up. That's the cover for the new dinosaur board. Um, it's got their logo and everything on it. Uh, one more thing. Dinosaur board do come with a three year warranty. So fill your card out, send it in. Just takes a minute. I fill out I fill out most of it actually. I fill out all my information. The customer only needs to put their name and address on it, drop half this in the mail. But I mean I've been using I've been using dinosaur boards almost I mean, any time I can, as long as the appliance is not under warranty, um, and probably been using them almost exclusively for 17, 18 years, and I've seen one bad dinosaur board in all them years, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bad OEM boards, one, one bad dinosaur board. They're pretty good stuff. Um, if you ever need to replace your board in your furnace or anything like that, uh, water heater, refrigerator, um, as long as it's not under warranty, definitely go dinosaur. Oh, let's see here. Let's see if this thing's heating up yet. And yes, it is. It's already heating up. So as long as the cooling unit's in good shape. Um, refrigerator I'll be fine. I'm going to put this cover on. Uh, put a little cover back on the, the bowler area and uh, we're going to call this one good. <laughs>